Hi, this is Matthew with uh, Outfishing 13. I'm up here at Strawberry Reservoir to do some crawfishing. So here's the traps I'm using. All it is is a minnow trap that I've separated into two pieces. And um, it's got some bait on the inside. It's got some rope attached to it. And you just toss that out there. The crawfish will climb in to get the bait. And then you pull it in. And that's pretty effective in that kind of water pressure pushes them against their, at the end of the basket. So um, it works really well. It's pretty effective. I wish that were just regular little baskets instead of half a minnow trap. But uh, I'm going to fix this wire on here to keep it, the crawfish from going, just swimming right out. But it works really good. Let me, I'm going to get them all set up and I'll show you um, how they work. Okay. We're going to go check the crawfish traps. I'll show you how that works. So I just need a bucket. Got a bucket right here to put them in. And we're going to go give it a shot. All right, check the first one. Look, we got four, eight, 11. All right, yeah, at least 11 or 12. Oh, that's what I like to do. I like to, sometimes the crawfish is so good that you can check them. When you get to the end, you can check them again. Pull this one in. Ooh, look how many it's got in it. Whoa, they're trying to swim out. That was awesome. This is the third one. Oh, these are the biggest crawfish I've ever caught up here. These are like little lobsters. I've never seen them this big before. They're huge. So that's three traps. Four. This moss is kind of helping. It traps them in there good. So this is sixth one. Oh, that one, I gotta rebait it. The bait came out.
Okay. That's eight. Oh, my bait got stolen out of that one too. I gotta get some more bait and come back and rebait those and reset them. All right, so this is awesome. Look at how much I have. Probably have 50 of them already. They just kind of move around. Every time we come over here, we've got a half a bucket full, a gallon. I'm going, I'm, I'm done, yeah. <clears throat> here. Swim on or two at a time so they don't swim away. <laughs> so Axel's just what eight months old? No, he's not even that old. Oh, 16 weeks. There he goes. Crawdad, buddy. All right. Oh, he's a cool little mink. It's neat to see him train. One's in there? Yeah, like six. That's good, though. Oh, is it? Oh. That is I one. You, I thought you were getting like ten. Yeah, but if he means he gets six or so, that's not too bad. That's actually good. Fish isn't really the best bait. Chicken legs and chicken thighs are the very best because it's hard for them to just eat everything. Awesome, that's perfect. Then we gotta clean them all because we don't have any way to cook them. Okay, pull on it a little bit and just pull it towards you a little bit. Let it turn a little bit. Okay, perfect, that's good. Okay. You said there was a little stream or something? Um, there might be a stream that we could try. I saved it. It was falling out and it fell in. Nice. Yeah, this is probably the very most effective way I've ever caught them here before. Some people just like a chicken leg and put a string on it and throw it out there and it pulled in really carefully. Uh, but, that's as effective. A lot of them will let go. But what I need to find is I need to find some <laughs> Sharon he's so funny. Yeah, trying to retrieve it. Should have brought your bumper dog. You just tried it this morning though. Anyways what I think it worked good is like little wire um, paper baskets you know Mm -hmm. for trash.
something. There's a crawfish in there and the moss. Okay. Thank you, Sherney. I needed a bath or a shower. <laughs> Yeah, we're still got another gallon. The first ones that we caught though seemed like they were really big. I don't know. Oh, I got a dozen in this one at least. Make sure the bait is in there. Yeah, one time my friend and I. Oh, you got you got you got another trap over here. Yeah. We got two coolers full. Okay, that was a pretty good round. That was ten traps. It's up to about half a bucket. So this is a three-gallon bucket, so like a gallon and a half. Okay, let's show you what I've got so far. So far we've got it probably, I don't know, there's probably a gallon or two of crawfish already. We're gonna go check them again. All right, this is the last one. Okay, so one of the guidelines here in Utah for um, crawfish is you can't take them from the body of water. You fish them at um, alive. So most of the time, most of the time what we've done is we've brought a cooker up here and we've cooked them and put them in the cooler hot and let them seep. But I'm just going to go ahead and clean these. So I'm just going to take the tails and the claws and that's all. And uh, but that's about all you have to do. So I tell them all, and uh, we ended up with about a good five gallon bucket completely full. And, uh, and I went ahead and tell them all, now you gotta do that here in Utah, you can't transport them live. So I found um, a lot of shellfish and like this do really well if you'll 
clean them while they're still alive and then put them right on the ice. It may not be as good as cooking them alive, but it's the next best thing. It's what we did in Alaska for a lot of crab, like tanner crab, Dungeness crab. We just uh, shell them out and uh, put them on ice or take them home right away and cook them. Mm -hmm.